20 Extra Minutes with Jackie and Dunlap. Folks, people, if you only know us from the Red State Update podcast, whose feed of which you are listening to this on upon, of? Or oh, oh, Redneck Matinee. How would you describe that podcast, Jackie? That's just what we talk about. Uh, movies usually depicting the South. Or movies that the South loved on and on, that sort of thing. Like movies, you know, that we loved. Good. Still do. Good synopsis. We... Even though some make us feel a little uncomfortable these days, we still got a place in a heart for it. Just not the racism. Places in the heart. Huh? Places in the heart. I asked you a good one, yeah. You may not know about a whole other podcast that Jackie and I do over on our Patreon site. Patreon.com slash... Unless you, unless you got $5 you want to come off of once a month, then you probably know about it. I bet you do know about it. Yeah. Some uh, folks out there who are just literally made of money give us $5 or more every month. And with that comes the exciting opportunity to listen to 20 20 extra extra minutes minutes with with Jackie Jackie and and Dunlap. Right. Now, every week, every week we do one of these. Uh, for our paper, five dollar paper. It's we, very different from what we do here. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. It it's is different. more rambling. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, just uh, train of thoughts all over the place. It don't really have a point to it. So older much. references, even. Yeah, it's like going down the courthouse and sitting out on a, on a bench, and whoever's out there, if they're up in age or something like that, and, and just talking to them for a while. I, that's what I compare it to, something like that, I guess. About Quincy. Oh, yeah, Quincy. We talk about Quincy. Uh, talk about uh, what else? We talk about every which. Sometimes we read our phone. Well, you do that. I don't read that damn thing. I ain't going to pay no time doing that. No. That is what people are paying for these days, and God love them for it. If you want to get over there and pay us for that like those people do, do it. Get oh, on over to Patreon.com. Please do. update. And these episodes, these twenty minute episodes, they don't belong to us. They belong to our, our, our five Patreon dollars. Yes, uh, uh, and we ask them like, which one would you play to somebody if you want to try to get them to give you five dollars to not them but us? Well, I guess they could give five dollars to them, and then that's ten dollars. Oh, they don't. They ain't doing it. They're just giving five dollars. Anyhow, which ones would you want to play to your friend and see if they want to give? Uh, uh, Dunlap and myself a five dollars a month to listen to, and they pick some out. These these are some of them. Yeah, thank you kindly. If you, you got, got the money, money honey, honey, we, we got, got the, the time. There it is. Your twenty extra minutes. You are a friend. This is owed to you. Well, we're doing it out of friendship because they're. F- but yeah, we owe it too, though. That's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, it's well, more than you that. Look at it's it like more that. Than, it's friendship is nice and sure, yeah, but it's more than friendship. I had a friend in third grade. Yeah. What happened to him? What a good old boy he was. What happened to him? How'd you know it was a boy? What if it had been a girl? I, I always got along good with girls. No. I don't think that's the case, but all right. Wes. Don't remember it that way. Who? Wes. Wes. Do you remember that weird church? It was somebody's house, and they would said it was a church. And then I guess there was a zoning thing, or they were trying to sell some sort of oils out of there. And the county come down and said, it's a house, it ain't no church. Right, right. And then that whole preacher and the family and everybody left. They they used to have meetings or something. Yeah, and, and, that, uh, yeah. I it was know like all this happened in like nine months. Some yep. People disappeared. Wes was the son of that quote preacher. So what happened to him? Wes Orkelo. What happened to him? If he was messed up in that, uh, well, we were good friends, dead. and all I did was support him. Yeah. And one time he showed me a Sunny D jug. A what? A sun, you remember Sunny D? Sunny D jug, yeah. He showed me a Sunny D jug. I said, what is in there? And he said, it's blood and urine. Why? 
I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, well, what'd you, why is that? He said, nah, it's just ketchup sauce. Ketchup sauce? I'm like, what is that? It's like sort of just ketchup and sunny D. What? I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, hey, it's good. I said, you can tell me what anything you need to. He said, no, it's good. Watch. And he drunk it. And then there was a rustle in the bushes. His brother, Russell, was in the bushes. And he said, you need to come home right now. And he wasn't at school for three weeks. Well, what happened to him after that? I keep asking. He won't answer the damn question. Is it dead, alive? What do you know about him? And then he come back to school. And it was only like a couple of days after that before the county started snooping around. Apparently, he'd been showing that jug all over town. So, I'm going to be honest. The way I'm telling it is kind of creepy, but I, I do think he just put some ketchup in a Sunny DJ. Yeah, that don't sound right. None of that no, they killed right. some people. That I come out later. I know that. I know that. If you talk about the same house, I know what you're talking but about. I but I think they, he just had a dark sense of humor because of the cult-like surroundings he grew I up in. I don't know. I don't know why you, your mom and daddy let you. If your daddy would have had you hide if he was had an off-drinking week, if he knows he was hanging out with some cult, he wouldn't like that. Yeah, because he wished he'd come up with it first. Well, yeah. He helped him for a little while. They had him sacking garbage. He was on parole. No regular church would take him. He One of the conditions of his parole was that he had to sack garbage at a church, and no regular church would take him, so well, he had to go to the cult that ones. That cult house, it, it ain't no church. That's it, right. It ain't. He's lucky he made it out of there, too. Well, I guess so. He's yeah. had so many close scrapes. He makes Wes Orkolo look like, damn, one of W. Bush's kids. I guess that's one of the few times that alcohol can, can help you is if he was in a cult. Because if he got, your daddy got lit up, he ain't going to hang around long. You know what I mean? So that at least got him out of there, I guess. Also, Quaaludes. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever that is, yeah. Drugs, I guess, right? Yeah. So I saw Wes Orkelo on damn Facebook. I found him on Facebook. On oh, computer, yeah. He seemed to be doing okay. He's a dentist. Well, good. That turned out okay. Dentist, Salt Lake City. Good for him. He seemed to be fine. He had a, a wife, 17 what? children. Things what? seem to be going okay. 17 children. What? I mean, his wife is older than him. Then why is that so weird? Why are you looking at me like that? I ain't just 17 kids. and you, I, you wouldn't think nothing about it if it was an older man and his wife with 17 kids. I, but because his, I'm not thinking anything at all. I don't care how old y'all are. It's, that's a lot of children. That's a, it's a whole lot. It could be a blended family. I'm not sure. Yeah. He said he had another wife before. Oh, well. Okay. When we were chatting. And he he said they ran concurrently, his some of his wives. So what? I'm not sure. Look, look. Just it because I said he moved to Salt Lake City, is this is not Mormon bashing. I'm telling a story about my friend. He was in a cult. He wasn't a Mormon. He wasn't technically in a cult. What? He was a. He was just the son of a cult leader. They didn't initiate you until puberty. Yeah. Puberty. Why did that come out so weird? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Why are you talking about any of this? Anyway? I'm just remembering the good old days. Well. Wes, me and Wes Orkelo just trading comic books and action figures and I remember that in the newspaper, what you was talking about when they were they're trying to shut it down and saying it was a church or a temple or whatever the hell, and I thought it was devil, but I don't guess it was. I said it wasn't devil. Well, no, no. He tried to tell me God and the devil are the same same person. Well, then, yeah, I guess it was then. I guess that was devil worship or whatever it is. Well, no, like but they him. called him God and the... Ugh. I don't know if your brain can handle this, Jackie. Let me... 
God and the devil are the same person, but you don't call God the devil. You call God God. You got it? What? I mean, you know how sometimes you hear things when you're a kid and they just sort of seep into your oh, consciousness? Dad, you, you. Like, I don't really believe that that's true. Like, I don't really believe that in uh, the first single I ever bought, uh, she got the gold mine. I got the shaft by Jerry Reed that uh, eating his cooking really did get the better of him. And that's the only reason he got married. But in my head, I still think that Jerry Reed got married because he didn't want to eat his cooking anymore. What? Like a real life in the song and some comic exaggeration from the song. I've all kind of blended into this knee jerk reality in my head. But if you ask me, hey, did you know that Jerry Reed in real life got married because he couldn't stand to eat his own cooking anymore? I'd be like, no, what? That's his song. Like if you ask me, are God and the devil the same person? But that, no, no, that's that weird cult Wes Orkelo's family had. Uh. But they had cable. You'd think a cult leader would be like, I'm, no, you can't see. But he let them watch whatever, HBO. Well. What was that show about the football team on HBO? You remember that? I never had all that. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, we watched all that. What, was Delta Burke on that? Any show with Delta Burke was very popular. I don't remember her, yeah. She's still around. We know where Wes is. Is Delta Burke still alive? Well, this don't ain't a good Delta sign. Burke was born July thirtieth, nineteen fifty six, and is sixty two years old. I didn't seem like he was. If he was having to hunt to find that, I was concerned there, but I'm glad she's all right. I need to get a new phone. She's married to Simon Simon. Yep. I knew that. They were the king and queen of TV at one time. Did she ever appear on Simon and Simon? I don't know. I mean, it may not. Maybe. I don't know. I, Jack, didn't, I didn't watch it that much. I, you let know. me ask you a question, because I, if you held a gun to my head right now, I couldn't tell you the answer. Did I play the Simon and Simon theme off my cell phone on twenty extra minutes? I think you a couple may, of weeks ago. I think you may have done that. I know you play it for me all the time, so it doesn't surprise me if you played it on here. Might what, have. What about the Hardcastle and McCormick theme? That I don't know. Simon and Simon. It's been so long. What were, were the detectives? What were they? I don't know what they were. They got. In, I mean, they usually snooping around, but I mean, what were they? I think they were. Magnum was a private detective. What was Simon and Simon? You ask it what was Simon All right. and Simon. All right, here's what I got. Well, that's pretty informal, Siri. Why don't you show some respect at the workplace? Why? Siri works for me. Who that's does? how I look at it. The woman on the phone? Yep. It's the worst job in the world. Simon and Simon is an American detective television series that ran from 1981 to 1989. Jesus Christ. That's almost eight years of that shit. Well, what was it about, though? What did they do? How did they stretch it out that long? Gerald and McRaney. Gerald McRaney. Yeah, that'd be a good name if you, like, adopted two dogs. Gerald and McRaney. Thought- and, and, and Jameson Parker. Okay, got, listen. Somebody needs to go down to the shelter and get you four good dogs. Pick you out four of the best ones. And name them Gerald McRaney. Jameson and Parker, and send us a picture, and we'll, like, I don't know, tweet it. We ain't going to help you out with food or nothing. Those are good names for dogs. Is, Every one of them. Yeah, that's Let's own, rank them. What's the best one? Oh, I don't know. Gerald? Parker? Jameson? I'm going to say McClain. McRaney? McRaney, yeah. Okay, McRaney's number one. What would be second? Parker? Maybe Parker, because you could call it Barker. Yeah, Par- Barker Parker. McRaney Parker, number three. Jameson, because it's funny, because it sounds like a butler. And number four, Gerald, because it's the name of, of Wes Okoro's father. Whose names are these, though? 
It's the name of the actors. Oh, of the actual actors. Okay. Simon and Simon. Well, that yeah, but their names on the show is Simon and Simon, right? That's yep. right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm making Simon. sure I remember that right. Two disparate brothers who run a San Diego private detective agency. There you agency. go. I for sure have figured it was. I didn't know if they was plain clothes. They weren't, you know, cl- cops or what they were. I don't, I couldn't remember. I didn't watch it that much. I remember it being on. It had, I remember liking the music when you played it for me, but I don't, I don't think I ever watched it. If I wear cowboy boots, a Hawaiian shirt, and a straw hat on Halloween, am I just Gerald McCraney? Right. A show I like back in too, Quincy. I thought Quincy was a good show. I always enjoyed it. Do you think people are regretting giving us money right now? Huh? What's your favorite? Quincy's a good name for a dog too. Yeah, actually, that's probably number one. Magnum's a good name. Magnum, Magnum you know, Pi. That's just another hit name. A dog, Magnum. Yeah, and then Higgins. <laughs> Good name for a dog. I'm thinking all these TV shows. Higgins is a good name. TC is a good name. Yep. Magnum's the only one maybe not a good name because it sounds like a rubber. All right. It does. It is. I went, oh, sh- so I was just typing in Quincy because I was going to pull up the theme song, but then Quincy the dog come up. So what? who's Quincy the dog? I don't know. All right, folks, hang on. We're about to uncover a mystery here on 20 Extra Minutes. We couldn't. We're not good with mysteries on here. We're still uh, hanging on Skip Stevenson. We don't know. Never going to hear a country song by Skip Stevenson. There's a good mystery. We solved the mystery that it had a country album. It did exist. Okay, I missed a whole thing here, Jackie. Uh, Quincy the Dog's Adorable Noises Explained. If you're a fan of adorable pet videos... And who isn't, it says. I like goats, yeah. You are probably a fan of online sensation Quincy the Dog, who is known for his cute noises. What? Veterinarian Dr. Ruth McPeat. I thought it was going to be Dr. Ruth Westheimer. If you're named Ruth and you're a doctor, when you meet somebody old, they're going to be like, hey, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Explains why dogs make sounds like the ones that have made Quincy famous. Like, I'm not, you know, uh, all right, I'm going to play a little bit just so you know what a dog, a famous dog sounds like. That's music playing. Well, that's a commercial. Quincy, what are you doing sitting like this, buddy? You look all depressed and stuff. Are you okay? Buddy, why does it look like you haven't slept in like five years? You all right? Quincy, is that really your ex-girlfriend on the TV right there? Can you take off your headphones and listen? Thank you. Quincy, I get it you're not over her, but you need to move on, okay? Okay, buddy. This He's is not it. making any He's sense. He's not yet. making yeah, any sense. I'm something. just hearing the on, man the talk park. to him. All wingman you, you'll find a girlfriend. Here we go. Let's go. Come on. Quincy, we're going to find you a girlfriend. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! All right, there you go. And forget about your old girlfriend. Forget about her. Yeah, let's go. You got it. Pump you up. All right. Off to the dog park. Let's go. Just got to the dog park. All right. It's- <laughs> That's the famous dog. <laughs> yeah. It's Quincy the dog. So I guess it already is a dog named Quincy. <laughs> Folks, thanks for it. Thanks for giving us that money. I like the show Quincy too, though. It's a still a good name for a dog. I never heard of the famous, famous dog named Quincy. That's should the first I, time I heard of that. Should I Google Jack Klugman dogs? What? Hey, Klugman's a good name for a dog. Yes, it is. That's a good name for a dog, like an old bulldog, Klugman. Klugman. What was the damn old? Uh, what was his buddy on there? On the odd couple. Felix. Yeah, in real life, what's his name? Tony. Tony. Randall. Yeah. Randall and Klugman. That's two good dog names. Oh, Folks, yeah. if y'all ain't already planning a trip to damn old Pet Smart to get you some water dishes and some uh, bedding with all these good names we got you, send us pictures of all the dogs that you adopt. I know y'all already. Listen, I, okay, I'll make you a promise. If you go out and adopt a dog and name it one of these things, 
you could you can stop giving us money because you're gonna need it to to feed them. Yeah, all them bones, bones. Isn't that what a dog eats? Dog chew on a bone, don't eat it. I don't think you're supposed to give a dog a bone anymore. Yeah, unless they kill a rabbit or something. Yeah, I know we're doing one too many of these parkers these days. All of them. We're doing, we do this one, the special one. We do the regular one. We do redneck uh, matinee, and, and then we're involved with 100 ways to love a cat. Yeah. How? But if we were doing just a new tangentially. one. Tangentially. Yeah. If, it, it, you know, it's up, you supporting it, yes, some of your money goes for that too, just to let you know. Sorry. You may, you may want to take that back after you listen to it, but still. If you did want another one, a new podcast where it's just good dog names. <laughs> it would be. I'd listen to it. Here's a good one. Clamps. Yeah. Clamps? Mm-hmm. What about this clamp? Take an I ass mean, off of it. Nah, it's all right, but clamps. It's better. Clamp. Real good dog names. Uh, I googled Jack Klugman dogs, Jackie, and it got ugly immediately. Actor Jack Klugman, who testified he loved his dogs more than his former girlfriend of 18 years, emerged victorious Wednesday in the $5 million palimony suit she brought against him. All but one juror, a man, sided with Klugman. <laughs> Unlike criminal cases, Jerry Ver... Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Hang on. Unlike criminal cases, jury verdicts in civil suits do not have to be unanimous. So one guy could be like, I ah, fuck him. Hey, watch and your mouth. Actor Jack Klugman wins $5 million palimony suit. This is in the Chicago Tribune, December 2nd, 1999. Wow. Do you want to dig deeper into that story? I don't like knowing all his personal business. I guess I'm glad everything turned out okay for him, I guess. Sounds like it. Seven-woman, five-man Los Angeles Superior Court jury deliberated for just two hours before rejecting claims by Barbara Newgas, 57, that Klugman, 77, and made a verbal agreement to support her for the rest of her life. Klugman, the former star of television's Quincy, an odd couple, insisted he never made any such promise. And never loved her. Even though he had continued to pay New Gas's bills. Is that really her name? New Gas? After they split in 1992. Never said it! After the verdict, New Gas said the jury was blinded by Klugman's celebrity status. I don't understand the jury's reasoning, she said. I don't I don't understand how they come to their conclusions. All but one juror, a man, sided with Klugman. Unlike criminal cases, jury verdicts and civil suits do not have to be unanimous. Newgas originally sought up to five million dollars in damages from Klugman, who said he dated her for nearly two decades because he found her a good companion. Newgas said she gave up a career as an extra and stand in on television. On television shows such as Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley after Klugman promised in 1974 and on repeated occasions since that she would never want for money again. Klugman denied he ever promised to support New Gas for Life and said he kept paying her bills after they parted because we dated a long time. We had some good times. Just send the electric bill over. Klugman said he never loved New Gas. I never loved her. If he was paying her bills, what, does she just want more money? Is that what she said? I mean, if he was... Jackie. If he was paying her bills, why'd she take him to court? He said, support her, not pay the bills. What are you going to eat after you pay the, get your bills paid? I've been a kept man. You need more money. Well, you don't just pay the bills. I'd be like, what? <laughs> what's for dinner? Um... Excuse me. They dated a long time, but he didn't love her. Said he never loved her. It's sad, really. 
I mean, it's sad no matter which side you're on. I'm not on anybody's side in this, but yeah, it's just a sad situation, yeah. Klugman said he never loved New Gas. When the actor conceded that he felt a kind of love for his pet dogs. What the? Is there a court transcript of this? Because how did they? When the actor conceded that he felt a kind of love for his pet dogs, New Gas's lawyer, William Glucksman, asked him, you love your pets as companions, but not the woman you were dating for 18 years? Klugman responded, now you got it. <laughs> Folks, this is the newspaper. This was actual news. Pre-9-11, everything changed. That's true. This is what was in the newspaper in 1999. <sighs> That's the end of the article. Well, I ain't going to top that last line. I don't know. That's about it. What's left to be said? The rest of the things that come up, what year did Jack Klugman pass away? Did Jack Klugman have any children? Who was Jack Klugman? Is Quincy dead? Oh, New York Post. Klugman trial goes to the dogs. Wow. I didn't think, I thought I'm, at best I'd get a picture of him from like with Gary Marshall and like a hound dog from some, but no. Promise to care for her for life. Is she okay, do you think? Uh, hell, I don't know. Why don't you go look up? Klugman77 struggles to use a voice made raspy from his bout with throat cancer. He couldn't talk that toward the end, or he could, but like... It... The trial has also exacted an embarrassing personal toll on Klugman. It was disclosed... What the fuck? It was Watch disclosed him, during testimony last week that the actor had had a penile enhancement? What? That's All the right. New York Post! I'm not making this up. All right. I don't want to hear. It was revealed yesterday that even after their breakup, Klugman had left a condo and more than $100,000 in cash to New Gas in his will. But Klugman said he had made no long-term promises to New Gas and that the cash and condo shows you how generous I am. <sighs> All right. We get a lot more research to come, Jackie. I guess I got my assignment. If you got the money, honey, we got the time. If you got the money, honey, we got the time. Hey, everybody, our favorite listeners, the people that give us $5 or more. That's I'm going to name them all right now. All right. It ain't but how many? 70. 70 people. 70. That's a lot. Maybe we shouldn't do it now. If y'all like it, let, tell us if that's what you'd like us to do. If you want us to read all the pad, pads. We'll just get on there every week and read everybody's names. No, we don't mind doing that. If that's what y'all want, just let us know. Uh, Maybe sing a little song about them. Well, then yeah, that's how many songs is that, though? That's, that's Well, 70. Dudley, give us some money, and he's my best friend. He is... Handsome and reliable, and he'll stick by you till the end. Yeah. His handshake is firm, and his hair is wavy, and he knows just what to say. Oh, Dudley come up off of that money, and he really made my day. Dudley. There's Dudley's song. Maybe we do one, uh, you know, Every, you know, you have to wait for years. We do it in alphabetical order. Well, I guess do it in the order whoever pays us the most. If there's people, there's more people who pay us more than a five dollar, they should come first. And then, uh, so if you want to be at the top of the song list, are we gonna do this for real? If you want to, I'll, I'll, we can write a little, I mean, they just a silly I little like, song. I like two I mean, verses and, a chorus? Two verses and a chorus. But without, I don't know if we're going to be able to have time to get a band to come in and help. I don't know if any musician is going to help us. If, so, if they do, then we'd have to give him some of his money. So I'll, we're saying know. we're just going to do this a cappella? Maybe we we'll should just talk about it. this. We'll talk about it a little more. I'm just saying, let us know if that's what you want. If everybody wants, you want to hear your Hell, song. Hell, Jackie, you don't need no band. They got this shit right on your iPhone. What is it? 
He got Garage Band. What is it called? Garage Band. Garage on your phone? Yeah, you got it's like a full band right at your fingertips. Garage. That's what you do the uh, parkist on right now. That's gar- that's what that is. Garage. You never played around with Garage Band on no, your iPhone? I don't, I don't have an iPhone, and I wouldn't want to play with it anyway if I did. Like, like, here's basically what a band sounds like. That don't sound like any band I'd listen to. Me either, but I mean... I, I, that don't sound nothing like Statler Brothers to me. Do you remember these? So, folks, you're going to want to get that money to us real quick so that we can (laughs) slam our fat fingertips on this iPhone and give you the song of your dreams. Are we doing this for real? I, you know, Hold off a week. We're going to talk about it. We'll, well, we'll tell you when it's happening. You got suggestions for us. We're happy to listen to it. Get on there. Our pad, 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 you know, pageant on. And, uh, Patreon. It's Patreon. Pad, That's where pad they're pad listening on. to this. Now, you don't have to say Patreon because. What is it? Because people know about Patreon. You don't have to plug it. But. I'm not plugging it. I'm saying get on there to tell us. What you know, what you know? What they think? Any suggestions they got about this song deal? If ever, 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 pattern gets a a song. That's seventy songs. That's a lot. It's more than seventy. That's too much. Probably shouldn't do it. Well, yeah. Another thing we were going to do is that Ray Stevens. We were going to do Ray Stevens, uh, his shows. He's got all them shows on YouTube. I think I show them on Channel Eight, live from his. Dinner Theater in Nashville. There's got to be something on every one of them episodes we could talk about. I'm, I, I'm sure there is. I, if he weren't so, uh, you know. Trump loving? Yeah. I, I I love old Ray Stevens, but since he, I, I, I'm scared to see what kind of show he puts on. I just, I, you enjoy hearing the streak and, and, and good talks there, and the next uh, new song about Mexicans is just ruins the whole thing. So I don't know if I can. Does he really have a song about me? Well, he does. I mean, even before he was super racist, he was doing racist songs. I mean, I have the Arab isn't exactly. Well, yeah. hasn't aged well. I'd, I'll say that. Yeah. What's that? Uh- Another song. That's that's two out of seventy something. However many you said there are, and look, you can change that grand piano to a soul organ. That sounds kind of racist. I won't go through all of them, but that's no, that's I don't a couple. Need to hear it on them. So Dunlap, we've been working ourselves up, and I'm sure other people have. Wearing ourselves to death, getting excited, getting scared, all this, all up till the midterm elections, they're over now. So now what will we be going to be scared, worried, nervous, excited about? Just now? day-to-day life in America? Well, that's true. Yeah, you're right about that. We thought this was somehow going to help with that, and then maybe we will a little bit, but certainly not. A, we needed a lot more help than we got these midterm elections. They I'll say that right definite now. good things. There you are were good right things. On the main podcast when you said the House is going to be a thorn in his side, yep. they can actually do some stuff. People don't like his tax returns. I know on the big podcast I was saying it don't matter what he does. That's true. People like it. People like him uh, being a criminal, lying, cheating, oh, that ain't cussing. Yet. I just say, oh, look how smart Assaulting. he is. He never paid taxes one day in his life. Well, he he showed the government well, didn't he? He sure showed them. Yeah, so they don't they don't care. But there's still like a few people here and there. If all these elections are like 50-50, there's still a few people you'd be like, well, shit, I don't know if I like all this. I think that's true of a lot of people with Trump. It's like, I don't know if I like all this. Some of the people in the middle, there's like, ah. Oh. And and there's different levels of that for everybody. For some people, it was him saying the Mexicans at the foot of that escalator. But for some people, it may be 20 more things. But yeah. they will eventually say, no, nah, it's too much. Yeah. But most people that like him will be fine with all of it. Well, they just like yeah. it. It's just what it is. Yeah. They like it. You can't stop them. They elected an asshole. 
That's what they wanted. That's what they got. Well, that Mitch McConnell's like presidential harassment, but he's right because if you elected an asshole and you knew he was an asshole, yeah, and you elected him, this asshole, and the people say, "Oh, you know, what about like uh, not being an asshole?" You think there's anybody out there that says it's harassment? Hell, I know. Excuse my language. Hell, I know he was an asshole. Uh-huh. But I didn't know he going to be this much of an asshole. This, I hit the jackpot. This yep. is really something else. I I knew he was going to be a little bit like this, but good Lord, he has he is really paying off. This is this has turned out great. I never could have dreamed anybody could be this much of an asshole. Excuse me, like an asshole. I told Maud I'd vote for him if he was more of an asshole. I can't, I can't drag myself down in the polls at this asshole level, and I regret it. I regret not going. Yeah, because I wish I could have said I voted for him when I, we didn't know how big of an asshole he was, which they did. People did. Though. Well, yeah, they do. He gave us plenty. I mean, we he pretty much everything he's done since he's been in there. It, none of it's really been surprising. It's just oh, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all awful. It don't make me okay with any of it, but ain't nothing like, I can't believe he did. You know, the only time I guess he did that when he's over in, where where did he go over there? Where, with, with Putin at, where was that? Oh, I forgot. Helsinki. Helsinki. Helsinki, right? yes. I, I forgot too. Yeah. You know, that was a big turning point for some people. For some, but not enough. When he said it was our damn fault that Russia hacked our election, that was the point where I'm like, what? What? I thought that was going to be something. Also saying Nazis are good people. We knew he knew or thought Nazis were good people, but him as president to say Nazis are nice people, that that, that seemed like a big much at the time. And I think there people are, rightfully so, still upset that he said that. And then, of course, all the horrible racist uh, campaign ads he just put out. Keeps going back to Nashville. Hey, we're not monkeying around this week on Cabaret Nashville. This is Ray Stevens, and my guest is Mickey Dolan of the Monkees, singing I'm a Believer. I'm a Believer. And other hits he helped make famous. Take the last train to Clarksville. Yeah, that's don't one of them. The last train to Clarksville. And don't miss Ray this show sounds almost, I know I like Ray Stevens a whole lot more than. than Huckabee, but it seemed that does seem like it, who's going to come by and play with a band, and we're going to, you know, talk about the wall. You think you got Mickey Wallens? Mickey, who is that? Mickey Mickey Dolan. Dol- Wallens. Mickey what? Mickey Dolan. He the Beatles, right? No. Hey, I got a great idea for Mother's Day. How about treating your mom to a night out here at Cabaret? Wow, you'll be hitting the Valley Park, guys. See you for Mother's Day here at Ray Stevens Cabaret in Nashville. Wow, <laughs> he's pretty confident that your that your mama love Ray Stevens. I tell you, you that right want now. to make your mama wet? Get her. To hey, this. watch your mouth. Take her down to where? What road is that? I don't know. West I don't End, know. End where it turns yeah. into Nam. <sighs> wow. There's a lot more. I could play a lot more of those. We got to do a deep dive in this Ray Stevens thing. Well, after we get done with Skip Stevenson <laughs> and Quincy's tr- trial, because we said it was divorce, but he wasn't ever married to that woman. I think we were making a mistake, Quincy. Not Qu- the real the, the actor, not Quincy. Quincy on the show will find out hey, he got married at the end of the show. But I'm talking about real life, that whole trial with that woman and not wanting to you know, give her more money or whatever. That wasn't his wife. That hey, was Jack just... Klugman works hard for that money. I didn't say he didn't. He welcomed. If he didn't think he needed to give that money to that woman, he had every reason to go to court. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't taking sides in the situation. I'm just saying they weren't married is all. They were they were a boyfriend, girlfriend for a while, and then he, he put her up. She was getting her bills paid and her rent paid. But again, that ain't enough if you ain't do you know if you ain't doing nothing else. It sounds a little sexist, but I... what does? Wouldn't you like to buy some real estate? Wouldn't you like to buy some real estate? Folks, we went 
We, oh, put, that's good there. I like it. We should it. put this up on Facebook and Twitter. We need to put it. We're going to put it up on damn Patreon, too, so y'all can see it if you haven't seen it. This is Tammy and Charlie Chavers. I guess she says her name in it. Sells real estate, Montgomery, Alabama. This is a um, a young woman and her ventriloquist dummy. They say you a nice house. Wouldn't you like to buy some real estate? Wouldn't you like to buy some real estate? From me and me. And me. Well, Charlie, we are at this gorgeous home for sale to tell the whole world about it. Wow. They they stopped that too soon. That should have went off a little bit. (laughs) By me. No, me. No, me. That's what they used to do. A good material kiss, they'd have a little argument. I know she needs to go ahead and get straight in her ass. Needs to get straight house, through the they, house. I they know. Got two well, if you're going to take your time to entertain everybody with a damn uh, ventriloquist kiss, dummy, do the, do the full, you know, do the whole thing. Folks, it's dumb for me to play this on a podcast because you got to see it, but just the voice it of it. It sounds pretty funny, it's too. 10,000 square feet. Square feet? Are my feet square? I only have two feet. No, Charlie, square feet is how large the home is. Wow. <laughs> wow. They got that from Lay Stevens. Uh, wow. <laughs> I bet she might have. I wonder if she's She may be in Ray Stevens' show for all we know. <laughs> she might have sold him that theater. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You got to entertainment room, Charlie. Do you shoot poo? No, but I love to swim. <laughs> Charlie, what? You know what happened to you last time you got in the pool, don't you? <laughs> Charlie, look at this amazing <laughs> home. This amazing I didn't say yet. I know what happened to him. in the ocean. It is just beautiful, Charlie. I just love it, and all my girlfriends are going to love it. Hey, what's that, Charlie? Let's move in. I'm Tammy Chavers with Remax <laughs> Properties in Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Lee Max, you think she was already a ventriloquist, or was it Lee, like, we're going to try a new thing? <laughs> They're like, how many real estate agents down there, they, they make, like, go practice? They, they have someone to teach you? How to learn to do good ventriloquist. And one dummy. guy is a ventriloquist and a real estate agent. He's like, I've been doing this a long time. Y'all don't have to listen to me, but I'll tell you right now, it's what worked for me. I couldn't get, I couldn't get nothing. So, I, <laughs> I, uh, it, Tammy Chambers. I, I, there's only one. I hadn't even watched the other ones. Is there more of them? Yeah, she's got like six or seven on How there. How many of them? I mean, because I saw that, didn't but 200 people see that. It seemed like that sh- everyone in the world would have watched that four or five times. I thought it was viral. Yeah, but it's not. Or it's some of the other I ones. ain't got viral yet. But now I looked, I didn't see any of them that was viral. This must just be something our friend found. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. It's only got about 900 views right now. Look, folks, I'm, we're going to put it up on Patreon, so look for it on the Patreon page. It's on, also on our uh, Twitter page and our Facebook page. It's Tammy Chavers of uh, <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama. I've watched that. I don't know how many. That's almost as good as a Mountain Dew. Remember the man oh, made Mountain man. Dew commercial? Yeah, we used to post. <laughs> we used to put that up all the time. I don't know. Show me all how long. Sun drop. It was sun drop. Sun drop. What am I saying? Good Lord. I said Mountain Dew. Sun drop. That's right. It's something about the little voice. It's a good voice. You know, she would probably talk to us, Jackie. I, I, her, I want both of them. I just don't want her. Yeah. Get, I don't want to talk well, both of them. If he comes on, we might have to pay. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's so we got to add her. Let's add her. Someday we're gonna do a. It's at her uh, Skip Stevenson record, uh, Quincy transcript of the trial. I don't even know if they have those. Is that even a thing you can get? Hell, I don't know. Is there anything else we've been putting off? Uh, Seventy songs. That's it's all coming. Just stick with us. <laughs> if we keep doing this long enough. Uh, we ain't got much, much else to do. I reckon we will. We'll just keep at it. Oh, should we make that? Uh, that we go to Montgomery and. And see Tammy Chavers live and in person? I don't know about going to Montgomery. Oh, I Everybody. did. A, hold on. Why? If we're doing Tammy Chavers, why am I not bringing all this up? I was about to look up that Sundrop kid. 
She was on a Southern Gospel. Hold on. Who was? Tammy Chavers. Oh, you you did a little research on a Tammy little Chavers. bit of research, just sort of pre-show. And she was on a Southern Gospel show. Because that's what my first thought was: was this ventriloquist dummy has been used in the service of Christ? But I, it seemed to me only to be used in the service. Of commerce. Oh, okay. But I think she may have used him as a good American in the service of capitalism and Christianity. Well, good for her. All right. Tammy Chavers and Charlie on Southern Gospel USA. That's on your phone? Yeah, it's about six minutes long. We're not going to play the whole thing. Hello, I'm Hubba Bubba, and I want to welcome you to Wiley's Smud Eye Grill. A lot of great things going on. The Southern Gospel. You- I'm going to say this. I'm not sure what this is. I thought it was a show on some kind of network, but it's sub network. I thought then I might be like public access, but it also might just be something somebody filmed in a bar. USA, and we're glad to be here today. We're going to introduce our next guest. Our next guest is kind of pretty, in case you don't have your glasses on. It's Miss Tammy and Sidekick Charlie. Hi there. I don't think there's anyone there. Thank you very much for that. To it's, applaud, it, I think that, that's, that's, that's added. Where is Charlie? That's a good question. Where? Where is Charlie? I just introduced Charlie. Where is he? I'm not sure. I thought you were going to help me find him. Can you help me find him, maybe? Well, I'm going to get the Smud Eye Blue Boys. The police? Looking. Yeah. The Smud Eye Police? Well, they got to. Just ask Wiley. He'll know. If Wiley, you are, there, are there police around here? <laughs> I'm really worried about... This is kind of like when our podcast ain't going so great. Why? Why we can do that on our own? We don't really need to play somebody else. No, no. Sorry, I thought this nah, might be nah. good. I should be doing better without this other guy on here. Listen, I just skipped ahead four minutes, and it looks like Charlie was found. In case you were worried, well, let's see what, what he's saying. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so that sounds like they were doing the old put your hand in the hand of the a man from Galilee. Yeah. <laughs> Put your hand in the hand of a man <laughs> right, from just... Galilee. Mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. 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 Yeah, but I'm down. Yeah, that was it. Yep. All right, so she does a little Southern Gospel with Charlie. She sells a few houses. Well, she make it away for herself. Good for her. Hey, in this gig economy? Good for her. I would not be surprised if you went to the airport in Montgomery and call a, a Uber and get in there and say, Hey, where you want to go, Charlie? I ask the questions around here. Sorry. If, if you, you got, got the, the money, money, honey, we got the time. If you, you got, got the money, money, honey, we got the time. Hey. Here we are. How you doing? I hope everybody's doing okay. Thanks for bearing with us. Uh, last week, uh, you're going to get an extra one of these come Wednesday, so we're going to make up for time lost. And, you know, we want to look. See what's going to happen with this damn election. You know, we'll, we'll see whatever. I guess that's what we'll be talking about come Wednesday. Not necessarily on this one, but on the other one. Hope all y'all are going to go vote. Hope every one of us, every one of y'all that gives a, a dollar or 50 cents or five dollars, I hope, I hope you all go vote. If you really want to make us happy, uh, 
just besides, you know, sending money to us, besides that, uh, make sure you go vote. Uh, today, tomorrow, whenever you listen to this, we're recording this on Monday night, so probably y'all be listening on voting day. So some of you may be like, hello, man, I already did vote. I don't need to hear any more of it. So I'm going to shut my mouth. Did you have a good Halloween? <laughs> what? Did you find something in your yard on Halloween? Oh, hell. <laughs> did you see that brand new unopened? 12 pack of Charmin I left on your yard. <laughs> yep. Because I got scared by a dog. Yep. <laughs> I can use that. It's funny. It didn't get, it was fine. It did, yeah. I, I'm going to use it. It's saving me money. So well, thank you. Every time you use it, think of me. Oh, well. Yeah. Sometimes, and you in the dark on Halloween, you hear a spooky barking. Whew. Scare the shit out of me. Well, a dog get a hold of you. You know, if it's a certain kind of dog gets a hold of you, y'all be scared. Y'all not be scared of all dogs. There's certain kinds, you know. And when it's dark and you hear the barking, you don't know. You know, you, you're guessing there. One so, of them field dogs. Could be a field dog, yeah. One of them field dogs live out in them fields by your house. I don't like them dogs. Them fence row field dogs, scary as shit, man. Well, they don't you ever get eat up by one of them? They don't bother me none, no. We got a, a long history of uh, dangerous uh, dogs uh, in Murfreesboro. Uh, some recent history, yeah. They're, 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 any dog, I mean, I guess after after we're pretty wary of dogs in general around these parts nowadays. The Middle Tennessee State University dangerous dogs, almost they almost went that went way. That name, yeah, it'd be that'd be appropriate, yeah. The dangerous dogs. There's going to be a bulldog with a a collar with spikes on it. Yep. One of them mean ass dogs. Bulldogs really mean. I don't ever see bull. Bulldog always look tired to me. I mean, I know pit bull stuff are mean and do terrible things. You know, people that, people make a dog that's do racist. terrible thing. Well, it's it, it, pit bull. They're, they're fighting the dogs. And racist. Stuff. How's, it, how's it racist? You saying that dog is worse than other dogs? Oh hell! They they get more trouble than the other ones that you hear about. I know every dog's capable of doing something out and not do, but I ain't ever seen a bulldog do anything but lay there, their tongue hanging out like you know they don't. They look out of shape. Something ain't right with them. Is that just something that comes from cartoons? Bulldogs are mean. I think that's just cartoon because in real life, yeah. Well, in cartoons, they're wearing like a shirt and a hat. And they got a big puff in their chest out, walking on their hind legs. It, yeah, they, 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 you know, they bad guys in that. But in real life, dog, they just kind of lay there. I ain't never seen a bulldog. They scared me anyway. It looked mean. They're cute. I, I mean, I like them, you know, for what they are. But you know, they ain't they ain't a, a dog you want to get for protection or anything like that. You remember the first dog you ever had as a kid? Well, hell, I had a lot of them had to live on the farm. Their dog there. All the... Were they all fence road dogs? Maybe some of them were. Some of them were. They all stray. You know, you you know, I can't remember. I guess the first the way I'm trying to remember. First, very first one that I remember naming, and there probably some before that was Tippy. Yeah. And Tippy run around, you know. He's a pretty good dog. He, you know, he was a good farm dog, but he also, you know, he he. Chase a ball or something like that. I remember he followed you around. Is that been it? A, been a lot since then. Well, what is he supposed to do? That's what it is. I mean, he eat food. He you walk around and he chase a ball. He bark every now and then. He didn't do anything extra special. He wasn't a show dog or nothing. Just a farm dog. He was fine. I ain't saying anything. I ain't right about tippy him. Dad. I'm saying That's your story like sucks. Well, I, ain't I, I told you. You asked me a question. I didn't know I was supposed to answer it with a damn story. I just told you what I remember. Well, I mean, we are talking on a podcast for paying customers, Cu huh? partners, paying Patreon partners, partners, partners. Yeah, yeah, customers, yeah, man, partners, pa pageant. I just thought if you got on pageant. here and said, you know, uh, tell me about the first. You dig deep and you do. Like Trump says, he doesn't lie. What's he? He doesn't lie all the time. Just when it has to, or something. When, like he, when it says, you get away with it. Get away with it, or something. Which is all the time. Yeah. 
I don't know. I can make up a story about yeah. this. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, they, they, the one time some burglars come, and the old Tippy said, What? Not, so, On the farm? You told me to make up a story. I'm trying to make up something entertaining. The burglars come, and Tippy barked and barked and barked. Like a home invasion? Well, trying to break in the barn to steal something, not the house, just in the barn. Were they know. high? I don't know. Dog scared him off is the point. <laughs> that happened to me at your house. <laughs> I love them, burglars. Yeah, we'll come full circle on that one, then, yeah. Next topic. What'd they get from the barn? They didn't get anything because Tippy barked and ran them off. Did you recognize them? I wasn't out there. I just saw Where were you? them running. I don't know. I was inside the house sleeping, and I heard Tippy barking and come running. Uh, do you have anybody who can vouch for your whereabouts? That, it's a made-up story. It don't matter what my whereabouts was. You told me to make something up, I just did. They, they end the story. That's it. He run them off. Look, I don't want to scare you, but we got Tippy in the room next door, and he's telling us a very different story. That dog been dead over 30-something years. 30 years? Wait a minute. Long dead. How old are you? Long dead dog. Maybe Tippy lived for a long time. All right, Tippy. I guess for a dog, did all right. But What happened know, to Tippy? And then old age, you know, about to give out. It's going to happen to all of them. He lost a leg or two before. Jesus. Well, I mean, he was fine afterward. You know, something happened. Somebody, I think somebody shot him one time. Who? Who? I don't know. The burglars? No, not the burglars. Something he was, you know, he went far off and you know got in some trouble and they come because he's a farm dog. I didn't keep him around. He come and go as he pleased. But yeah, he come back and leg messed up. We had to, you know, take him to the vet and that, you know, he didn't have a leg. But vets used to. But do he it. was fine with that. He'd hopping around, you know. He, vets he didn't, didn't give a fuck. Did that vet even have a degree? I tell you who don't give a watch your mouth language who didn't give a is Tippy. Tippy was fine. Like, all right. You know, that's an animal for you. That's one thing I like about animals. Like, all right, this is what it is now. Okay. That's pretty much an animal. You know, when a dog, you put that cone on his head or something, he got to wear it for a week. And you think, oh, it's just going to be hell or, you know, whatever. He's like, yeah, that's what it is. Dogs are good at that. People ain't so good at that, but dogs, you know. I don't know, people adjusted to Trump pretty fast. That's true. I sure as hell ain't. There's plenty of people mad as hell about it. But there's a lot of people with that coat on their heads just going, I, I guess we're fascists now. There's a lot of uh, more people I'd like to admit are that way. Yeah, Republicans. Yeah, well, this is what it is now. This is, you know, this is what we have to do. This We have to be racist. We have to be awful. We have to say that Nazis are, we have to tolerate Nazis and say that's okay. Hell, I ain't going to do none of that. Look who you're in the car with. I'm in a Republican car. Well, the Republican car's got a lot of folks in it right now. First off, let's, you know, would you want to be in an automobile with uh, people at a Trump rally? Just filled up with them like, like a clown car or something. And I ain't trying to make no insult. I'm just saying I got a buddy down in Chattanooga when the damn Trump rally come. He's like, I ain't driving Uber tonight. I don't blame him. I got tickets to the Trump rally. I said, not what? I, I thought we were friends. Where was Tippy buried? I somewhere out back behind the barn years ago. Same, the same scene of the crime when Tippy chased off him burglars. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to say. Yeah. I guess a good place for her, him, her, him. Huh? Him or her? I think it's a her, but I don't, I'm not him. I don't, it's years ago. I think it's a him. Actually. Did you build a statue to Tippy no, on the side? No, I didn't build no damn statue. I buried the dog. I put a little cross or something there. I remember doing that. That's about it. That's pretty good. Well, you know. A little something. Just sticks? Yeah, just sticks, but I tied it up, you know, took a little leather strip and tied it, you know, like a little kid would. I had a little kid when it happened, you know. Now, back in, I didn't know that dogs don't go, you know, they don't go on to heaven. I thought back in, well, they did. You can't, they, the whole industry of dogs going to heaven, the Rainbow Bridge. What is it? All dogs go to heaven. That's two different things. 
Look, if you tell people that dogs don't go to heaven, nobody left will want to go to heaven. Well, I don't know when that changed, but if you tell it's people... It's better up there where you don't need a dog. You'll see. We're all going to find that. Well, some of you will, anyway. Some of you won't. Some people say, heaven, if there ain't a dog in heaven, I don't want to go. Yeah, roast in hell, then, I guess. A lot of people say, you know, I would rather have a president who says he loves church and Christians and Jesus... But really, is the opposite of all those things. But it's important that he says the things. Does that make me less of a Christian? If it does, that's fine. I think we're still in a better place. A lot of people like that with their dogs. If you're telling me that dogs can't go to heaven, I will renounce Jesus Christ and everything he stands for right now. Well, if they're going to do it over Trump, at least, you know, Dog is worth it. Well, he's not worth the renouncing of Christianity, but I'd be, you know, if I'd be tempted, more tempted to, for, to do it for a dog than I would, you know, I don't see why anybody does anything for that man. You know how people think that uh, Democrats come up with this whole thing to trick Kavanaugh and, you know, how James O'Keefe is always trying to trick Democrats. Is that his name? Who gives I shouldn't have even said his fucking name. You know how people always try to trick people like, oh, we'll get them. Who's that? Who them dumbasses? Father and son that tried to say that. <laughs> so oh, well, Muller. Muller. That, that, that's pretty funny. I remember that. I was entertained. I can't remember the name. Listen, but. you can't do it with women with Trump. We've already proven in this country that the people who like Trump don't give a shit what you do to women. Nope. Like that is stuff. And if you try to bring it up, they'll get so mad, they'll vote him in again. Yep. I just can't believe what they did to that. It can't be. It's not going to be with the women. It ain't going to be with crime. It ain't going to be with money. It ain't going to be with Russia. It ain't going to be with nothing but a dog. I think we've said this on here before. If somebody wanted to try to create a situation where we get bad optics on the president, we need to just release a bunch of dogs onto its golf course and have a bunch of cameras out drones i don't know how you get cameras over there to his golf course you just gotta have cameras at the ready for when he kicks one of them dogs yep i can't obviously at this point nothing else is gonna do it it's the only thing we haven't seen people know he doesn't like dogs but they're overlooking it he like don't jesus. like he, he don't, don't like, like dogs or jesus he don't like any animal but if we got a picture of him, like, get away from me, you mutt, kick. Now, poor dog, we'd have to find the right dog now, with the see, right I temperament. That, that's what we are talking earlier. You called him a racist pit bull. Yeah, we get a good pit bull. Because they, they, they head, that's thick. You ain't going to, it wouldn't, especially coming from him, he'd kick a pit bull as hard as, hard as he could with his old legs, heavy, heavy set. Not, you know, he, that ain't going to hurt. That ain't going to phase a pit bull at all. I think I think a, a decent pit bull would be willing it to put itself in harm's way to do that for America. I You're think. Like, oh, pit bulls are mean. Pit bulls have the power to destroy you at all times. Yes, and it they doesn't do. even cross their minds. It ain't the dog's fault. It's when people train them to do that. It's that the dog's a sweet dog no matter what. You oh, if we a could, sweet dog. If we could find out that Trump had a dog fighting ring, ooh, that we don't even have to do the dogs on the golf course. We just need to get some people. Did, did we just need to do what they said the Democrats already tried to do with Kavanaugh, but instead make it about a dog fighting ring, and we gin up some pictures of Trump on the floor with a wad of cash and some dogs in the ring, and him looking at the camera? That's too risky. I think I don't know that could that could, you know the next day it'd either be like enough, this is it, final straw, or you know real popular, you know. Bringing it back in style. I don't see anything wrong with a little dog fight now and then. Trump dog fighting rings open up all across America. Uh, yeah. Chick fil A and dog fighting. How many countries gonna come out? Remember Nigeria come out and, and and quoted him again after he said if they throw a rock, shoot him with a gun. It's the same thing. Of course, they just got finished killing a bunch of people over there. 
And after the president, that's where he said stupid stuff. Well, he just says stupid stuff all the time. Well, it matters because, you know, next day they're, they're quoting the president saying, see. Did he get elected because he says stupid stuff or in spite of the stupid stuff? I don't know. I don't see any reason why anyone would ever consider voting for him. So I, you asking the I wrong man. I keep saying we're going to stop talking about him, and we wind up now we're talking about him on this. I know it. Well, hopefully, you know, tomorrow I'll be able to give him a up, up, human language, up yours with the vote turnout. We'll see what happens. Did want to say that I did speak to uh, Skip Stevenson, uh, our friend uh, with the Skip Stevenson oh, connection. Good, good. That's uh, right. We've been saying her name, Elaine, her, yeah. uh, Skip Stevenson connection woman. Great, uh, giving us a lot of stories. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of charity for horses. That's true. Yep. Um, when she. I guess I could go ahead and plug it, but I don't have the information with me. But she said if she finds that album, we're going to tell y'all to give money. Hell, if she gives us that album, I'll give money to the horse well, charity. I will, too, yeah. I'll, I'll write it. So when that album on. comes out, we're going to be writing some checks to horses. And you, dear friends who already give us way too much money, don't have to, but just but listen. If we're sitting here listening to Skip Stevenson's country album, that's I I can't even put a, a horse price on that. Yeah. So yes, there there's, will be some horse charity going on here, and maybe even before. Why well, I don't want to make the horses suffer. We should put up a link. Even if she doesn't find you know the album, that's then like I don't want anyone to be like to hell with those horses. No, we're going to put up a link to the horse charity. Y'all can give money to the horse charity. I don't think, it's not a bribe. I don't think it's going to do anything. But, you know, now we've talked about it so long. She's be been stupid. nice enough to give us all this information, and she's still trying to hunt for it. So at least we can do, if she if she, if she loves a horse and I love a horse, I'm happy to, happy to, any horse charity is fine with me. But she's still hunting for it. She ain't found it she, yet. She ain't found it yet. She got it's in a place. She's not like in her house. It's in a storage. Right. She don't get there all the time. She got to go there for some That's other right. reason. And she's there. To, yeah. And then look then forward. Then she's looking for it. All right. So, matter of time, people. Pretty soon, hopefully, we're gonna all be on here listening to some Skip Stevenson. I sure am looking forward to that. I also got to look up that damn uh, Quincy divorce trial. Oh yeah, I wanted to hear more about that. I did, did none of that seemed Quincy like his behavior in that. And at the same time, it did. Was Quincy divorced? Seems like he would have been. Seemed like yeah. He, he, Was I, Quincy divorced? He asking that. Here's what I found on the web for what is Quincy divorced. Quincy Divorce Lawyer, Family Attorneys. Quincy Jones, I have 22 girlfriends who all know each other. What? On Quincy, he was always, he was the, a ladies' man, which I, you know, I didn't know women was attracted to men who cut up dead bodies, but, you know, that, but he was, you know, he was always on, on, trying to, you know, have a new girlfriend or something, I think, if I remember Quincy correctly. So I know he wasn't married on the show, but beforehand, I don't know. He have an ex-wife. Seems like that'd be a good character, ex-wife, you know. The former Mrs. Quincy? Yeah. Yeah, was he like a confirmed bachelor or was he divorced? I can see it going either way. Yeah. I just never found the right one. I can't do a good. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Quincy. A little more excited. I just couldn't find the right one. But he got his throat. Something happened to his throat. Then he couldn't hardly understand him, bless his heart. But yeah, he, he didn't stop him. He kept going. People went to go see Odd Couple. And he was doing it after he had the throat, whatever. Was it cancer or something? It was something bad. And it didn't have any vocal cords. And people still went to go see him just to, you know, which I don't blame them. That's fine. Plus, an odd couple, you've seen it before. You probably know what, you know, even if you can't understand him, you know what, you know, know what's going on. Oh, he got married on the show. Well, I'll be. He was called Winslow in the episode where he married Anita Gillette. Did they stay married or did they get divorced on the show? Oh, shit, I don't know. 
Are we going to have to watch every Quincy? I wouldn't mind watching every Quincy. It doesn't sound like, that doesn't sound like a bad thing to do. But I was, mean, How many Quincy's are there? It is revealed in the episode The Last of Lead Bottom, Quincy is a retired captain in the U.S. Navy. How many episodes of Quincy? How many seasons is that on the TV? It couldn't have been that long. Oh, I'll, I'll, let me just read this real fast. Quincy is very popular with the women. This yep. is from Wikipedia. Yep. He was married once before, but lost his wife, Helen, to cancer. Oh, I didn't know. Widow, I didn't think. I think it divorced. But yeah, widow, we didn't yeah. even, that wasn't even an option. In the mystery movie installments and earliest hour-long episodes, Quincy has a regular girlfriend named Lee Potter, Lynette Metley, who sometimes accompanies him on cases. This is his only steady relationship until near the end of the seventh season. So there's seven, seven seasons. That's the last one. He gets married at the end. That's when the end. Of Quincy retires. remarries. Remarries Doctor Emily Hanover, played by Anita Gillette, who had previously portrayed Helen in a flashback. Remarries her. Now he got remarried. Eh, that is weird. That's weird. You don't phrasing. remarry if you're a widow. Well, you don't marry a corpse. Listen, he also sued NBC, asserting that the network had, some people do, had concealed profits from the show, which were owed to him. There's plenty of corpses on that show for him to, you know, be sweet on, I suppose, but that didn't make any sense. He wouldn't, you know, that's what the whole show was with dead people. Jackie, there were 148 episodes made. Yeah. He appeared in 147. In the episode, has anybody here seen Quincy? Doctor Aston talks to Quincy twice on the phone, but Quincy's voice is not heard and he is not seen on screen. The reason Klugman did not take part in this episode is because he disliked the script written by Michael Sloan and Glenn A. Larson for the episode. A body brought into the morgue turns out to still be alive. Klugman thought it laughable that a medical examiner of Quincy's fastidiousness would fail to notice it. I just, I just don't buy it. Never happened. Never happened. He, that, I have to stand by him on that because he solved how many crimes. I mean, he, he, you know, that's what he did. He looked into something and said, you know, this what it wasn't an accident. It's, that's what it was. One in every week. It, this is the accident. This, this is, is no a, accident. This is a, yeah. So he wouldn't, you know. Well, maybe if it starts off, it's like, I've solved so many murders in my time. He's just looking back, and then in the background, you see somebody on a slab sit up and just scratch your ass and walk out the door. He's like, what the? And then the rest of the time, he's like, I guess I'm losing my touch. And he has to get his, well, Quincy got his groove back. Yeah. Conversely, Klugman is the only regular cast member who appears in the final episode of the series, The Cutting Edge which was a backdoor pilot for a proposed series about a revolutionary new clinic. NBC did not pick up. I hope people love, love Quincy. That I hope there's a big crossover of people who give us $5 a month and who love Quincy. If you don't love Quincy, we hope you love hearing us talk about Quincy. I'll say That's that true. Too. Yeah. That may be people, like I never liked him, but I love hearing him go on and on about him. I don't know nothing about Quincy except what Jackie and Dunlap tell me every week on 20 Extra Minutes with Jackie and Dunlap. If you, you got, got the, the money, money honey, honey, we got, we the, got time. the time. Go vote. Or I hope you voted. Thank you. <laughs>